How comfortable would you be to have your bank balance on display for everyone to see? They'd see your statements, how you spent your money, how much you saved. If that makes you uncomfortable, that is the crypto equivalent of when your crypto wallet address is connected to your public profile. Along with the increasing popularity of crypto is the increasing number of hacks and fraudsters that are trying to take advantage and get their hands on your crypto. So how do you protect yourself so you're not exposing yourself to potential threats? The first part is by not putting your crypto on display for the world to see. If someone sees that you have a load of crypto in your wallet, then that is incentives for them to try to get it. So in this video, we're going to deep dive into what steps you can take to make your address private. Now, before we get started, this is intended for personal use. Don't try to evade the government or law enforcement. It's not going to work. Trust me, they have better tools than us for chain analysis and tracking money. But this will keep it private for other people that are looking at you and not knowing how much money you have. I'll be covering methods for keeping your wallet addresses safe from being connected to your personal profile, not security. So if you want to stay secure in DeFi, then I have a specific video on that linked below. And if you're in DeFi, you should want to be secure. All right, let's jump in. All right, so here's an example of an Ethereum address. Like Bitcoin, everything on the Ethereum network is public, but the addresses are pseudonymous, which means that we can see the address, but we can't tie it to a specific person. It's just a random bunch of letters and numbers. Now to show you how public this is, if I input an Ethereum address or an ENS into a tool like Zapper, I can easily see everything that's going on inside of their accounts. I can see what they've bought, how what's in their wallet, what NFTs they have, and if they've connected to other things, I can ultimately figure out who they are if they've connected it to a public profile. By the way, that Ethereum address that I mentioned above is a Shiba Inu wallet that turned 8,000 into over 2 billion at one point. So everyone can see it, yet no one knows who it belongs to. Now, if someone on Twitter had a name like shibaguy.eth as their ENS and it tied it to their public profile, then everyone would know that that was their wallet. And then that puts this person as a potential target for hackers or bad people looking to score a windfall. Because why rob a bank when you can find this guy on Twitter that has 2 billion? Now, even if you're not publicly sharing your ENS tied to your wallet, there are things that you could be revealing on Twitter that publicly tie you back to your wallet. Here's some examples. NFT profile pictures. Those NFTs can be tied directly to your wallet. Sharing how much you were airdropped. Uh, for example, oh, I got 2000 ENS in this airdrop. Sharing screenshots of the WTF.fees. Putting your ENS domain as your Twitter name, that's obvious. Maybe sharing an NFT that you bought or minted. All of this can be tied back to your wallet. Now, you might already have thought of this and you might have a separate wallet for your NFT profile picture and your ENS. Now, if there's been any transfers to and from wallets, then they are permanently linked and can be easily traced. So don't make yourself a target, protect yourself and mitigate the risk and don't show everyone what's in your bank account. So let's jump into how do we protect ourselves from that? All right, here's three ways to avoid doxing yourself. One, separate your addresses. You wanna have a public one and a private one, at least one. Two is don't link your wallets. You wanna wash your transactions so that there's no connection between a public and a private wallet. And then lastly, be careful what you tweet about or talk about online that could dox you. Firstly, how to create and keep public and private accounts is one, maintain multiple wallets. So at a minimum, you should have at least one public and one private. And consider even more if you want to spread your risk among multiple public and private accounts. Now, if you don't start with a lot or you're not dealing with a lot, this might be overkill. But once you're more into DeFi, this might be something that you want to look at. Now, public addresses are, of course, publicly shareable. Think of this like your Venmo feed. You don't care if someone sees you spend $20 on a taco or what you're spending each month. But private addresses should not be shareable. This is for activity that you intend to keep private, like your bank account. You don't want to show everyone what you're doing day in and day out. Now, you might want to think about separating your private account so maybe you have one for DeFi and jumping into projects and the other one for long-term uh, storage of your funds. Now, if you want to have an NFT as your profile picture, this should be from your public wallet and not your private wallet as it can be tracked. I can take that picture, put it into OpenSea or Google and find exactly what wallet is holding that NFT. Now, if you've only ever had one account, it might be safe to assume that it's not public because you might have said something online that has tied that to your account. And if you don't think that you have, make sure that you go through your transactions to double check before assuming that it is your private account. So for example, if you've bought your ENS domain and you have sent money from 
your name.eth to a, another wallet, that wallet is now connected. Now, as a last resort, you could choose to burn it all down and create brand new accounts to transfer your assets to. You wanna make sure that you keep your keys and your seed phrase safe just in case because maybe there'll be a future airdrop to that old wallet that you'll wanna partake in. Now, here's what your wallet stack might end up looking like one public account for your ENS and sharing funds for your friends. So if someone needs ETH for a transaction, you would send it from that account. You would have one private account for straight up holding, so like a hardware wallet. You could have one private account for DGN and DeFi stuff, also on a hardware wallet. And you could have one private account for quick buys and sells. And this could be on MetaMask and just a browser wallet that you could do from your phone, but it doesn't hold a lot of funds on there. Once you have all this, you want to move your money. So this is the next step. You have finished creating the public and private accounts. You want to move your funds. First thing you'll want to do is just send it to that new account. That would be a mistake because now you're tying your old wallet directly to the new wallet and that will defeat the purpose of everything you've done so far because you're now permanently connecting two accounts on chain and any halfwit out there would be able to connect them. So for example, if you send your NFT, that's your profile picture to your new public wallet from your private wallet, well, now they've been connected and everyone can see exactly what wallets are yours. You need to be like Marty Bird and wash your funds first. So a good way to reroute or wash funds is to send them to a central exchange and then back out to a new address. Now, this is an easy way to do it. You could also use a mixer on Ethereum like Tornado Cash. And if you want to know more about that, I have another video on privacy coins and Tornado Cash, which you can see in the description. But that is a good way if you're dealing with Ethereum and a lot of it, you can put it through there and essentially sever any links between your wallets. Now, if you send your money through a mixer like Tornado Cash, you might do it over a few weeks or depending on your size, a few months. If you are a whale, uh, you're probably not watching this video, but if you are, you would want to do that over a few months so that it decreases the chances of people being able to tie your wallets together and link you to your assets. There are no current ways to erase NFT ownership or transfer privately, and this is because the whole point of them is they're non-fungible. So putting them into a mixer with everyone else's stuff wouldn't make sense because they're still one of a kind. And if you put one in over here and it comes out over here, it, they still know it's yours. So currently there's no way to transfer NFTs. And I don't think the whole purpose of NFTs is they're non-fungible. There will be a way in the future to be able to transfer them privately. Now, once you've done this, you've either sent them to Coinbase or another exchange and sent them back out. Once you have these wallets separated, number three is don't cross stream. So do not transact between this public and private account. You should consider these completely separate from here on out because it would be pointless to do all the work in separating these accounts, redistributing your funds for a mixer, paying transaction fees, only to dox yourself by sending a payment from the wrong wallet or just moving some money around and realizing now you've made a permanent connection. So use coin mixers or crypto exchanges to wash transactions. How to wash using a crypto exchange? Send ETH to a Coinbase account or another crypto exchange from the old address you were getting rid of, and then transfer the ETH from the crypto exchange to the new address. Now, a good tip is to obscure the mounts. So if you're sending something unique like 69.420 ETH into an exchange and then sending the same back out to another account, it will be easy to track if someone was really looking for it uh, because that is a very unique address. If you were sending 10 ETH in and taking 10 ETH out, that's much more difficult. You could also split the amount that you're sending in into a few different batches and then batch them together sending out so that if someone was just looking at a ledger, they're not going to be able to track those together. Now you may also want to leave it in the exchange for a few days to allow some time between deposit and withdrawals if you want to be very careful. And this is, you know, if you are really being careful about being tracked, that might be something you want to do. How to use coin mixers. Again, I have a video on this, but you basically deposit it, you get a random key and then put your Ethereum in there. From there, it will sit in this coin mixer and you want to wait for a few days, few weeks, few months, depending on how much you have in there. And then what you're doing is basically depositing from one address and being able to withdraw from another address. Now there are fees involved in this, so it's not like one ETH in, one ETH out, but it is the best way to sever uh, links on Ethereum. Now for more detail on privacy coins and mixtures like Tornado Cash, including how to use it, check out the link below this video. Now lastly, think before you share publicly online. So a simple slip up could easily connect you to your address. So if you're tweeting out, oh, I just got you know, 2,200 of this random token in this airdrop, guess what? Someone can look how many addresses got 2,200 and they can tie it back to you. Or maybe you say, oh, I just bought this Bored Ape NFT. This can be a stepping stone or 
basically a map to your address. So you wanna be careful what you brag about and share publicly. Now, some of these steps might seem like a lot of work, but I promise you, if you're getting into DeFi and you value uh, security and privacy, a few hours can benefit you largely in the long run and stop you from being a target for hackers or fraudsters or whoever else. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next one.